of practice go? I feel like it was one of our better practices as far as energy is concerned. We have to get in the film room and watch it, you know, full on and see what actually happened out there. But I felt like it was a great day. Without harping on what happened over the weekend, was it easy to put that behind you and, and kind of focus on practice the last couple of days and what's ahead? Definitely not. When you lose by that much of a margin, it, you know, it hurts you. But at the same time, you got to learn how to put it behind you and move forward because you got another big weekend ahead of us. How do quarterbacks look out there? I think everybody looked good. Um, I wasn't really paying attention too much to it, focusing on the defensive scheme, but I, I felt like the guys were good out there. How do you guys do that? You mentioned putting the last game behind you. How do you guys go about doing that? Well, you got to understand that there's so many big games ahead of you. You know, you have the Floridas, the Georgias, the Alabamas, the South Carolinas. You can't focus on, you know, a loss that's already behind you. You got to keep pushing forward. What's going to be the key for the defense? I think last game, you guys gave up over 500 yards to Florida. What's going to be the key for you guys? Uh, I feel like we have to be physical. We got to be physical. We got to get upfield with our pass rush. We got to have a, a better pass rush than we did last week. And I feel like guys just got to know their assignments better than they did. Corey, right. facing Mariota, how, how did that help you maybe taking on Driscoll this weekend? What, what did it prepare you for? It prepared you for a mobile quarterback. Driscoll's, Driscoll's great inside and outside the pocket. He's able to get outside and make plays with his feet. So I feel like playing Mariota really prepared us coming into this week. Are you guys aware of the uh, streak that's going on and not having beaten Florida in over eight, eight games? We're definitely aware of it. We're aware. But uh, this is Team 117. We're looking for a new dream right now. You know, looking forward to a new era of Tennessee football. So we're going to try to go out there and get the job done. Corey, when you look back at last year, they, they kind of found some success on the edges. What, what do you guys need to do better to, to kind of keep them tame when they do a fly sweep or do something with your squad now? So. Uh, us as defensive ends have to do a job of getting upfield setting edges, setting our points so these guys can't get outside of us, forcing it back to our linebackers. So that's, a, that's one of the main things we got to worry about. Do you remember that long burden run that kind of flipped the game there? This, yeah, I mean, what do you have to do to kind of contain him as well because of all the, the different things he kind of can do? He's talented. He can get in the wildcat, line up at receiver, line up at the H-back. He can do a lot of things. I feel like we just have to be you know, technically sound as a defense in order to stop plays like that from happening. When you look back at that game from last year, was that kind of the turning point, that, that play when he busted it for 70 yards? It most definitely was. you got to understand, going into the half, we were doing a great job playing against Florida. And then the first play out of halftime, he breaks it for that long run. And it kind of, I guess it kind of shocked us. So we have to we have to stop big plays. Corey, do you feel like you guys are more prepared for that, though, for that shock factor, if, if something like that were to happen? Yes, sir. Coach Jones has trained us you know, to be prepared for any kind of adversity whenever it happens and to snap and clear and play the next play. So I feel like we'll be prepared for it. Corey, Butch is out there today saying, you know, seniors for the last chance to beat Florida. What would it mean to finally get those guys in your career? It'll mean everything to a senior class because we're setting the example for not only ourselves, but for, for young guys in the state of Tennessee. If we can go out there and get a win against Florida, it'll, it'll jumpstart the Tennessee program back to where it needs to be. You sense that they feel like they own you guys, that they're confident even if things don't start out well, as was the case last year, that they'll come back and win? Florida's one of the most confident teams I've seen on field. They believe they can beat anybody. They're a very talented team. At the same time, we also believe in ourselves and we believe in the, the program Coach Jones has set up for us. So it's going to be a, good, a great chance for us to go out there and put on for Tennessee. Corey, with, Corey with Mo and, and Tavar Sal, Jason and, and Daniel are going to have to kind of step in there defensive tackle. What, what have you seen from them? And do you think they're ready to kind of get thrown in there? I know they got a lot of work there in the second half on Saturday. Those guys understand that it's a huge opportunity for them. And even though we're low on the inside, these guys have been playing playing real hard today. They came out and practiced hard. Danny had a great day of practice. Jason Carr had a great day of practice. So I'm confident these guys will be able to come in there and hold it down. Do you think those guys understand that, you know, whether they're ready or not, they kind of have to go in and, and get the job done? They know they got to go. They have to. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You have, they got to go. We're going we to need them. What makes you think they can kind of hold up in there in, a, in an SEC game like that? I feel like they can come in and help Big Daddy McCullers and help Dan Hood for even if it's a couple of snaps, we need anything we can get out of them because we can't have those guys out there on the field for the entire game. With you guys having the players meeting Sunday and everything, I know you're really obviously concerned about how the young guys have bounced back from a loss like that. How has it been so far? I mean, can you tell uh, the young guys have taken it well? They've taken the players meeting well. We came in and basically we just told the guys we can't have what happened last year, losing to Florida and the season spiraling downhill. You got to be able to knock it off and keep moving forward. We got a lot of football left to play, and this team is going to be able to bounce back you know, through any adversity. Would you, uh, what do you guys talk about the rivalry when it when you haven't had success against a rival? How do you does it skew the view, or how do you kind of keep that as being a rivalry in terms of how the fans view it at least? The rivalry never changes, not in my eyes, not in any guy around me. I know the fans, for one, they hate these guys as much as we do. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I have no love for them at all. But uh, I feel like I feel like the rivalry is always gonna be exactly what it is, and 
It's gonna be a knockdown drag out fight when we head out there on Saturday. And how do you see guys responding to, you know, Butch really plays it up and he's talking about Florida playing the music, doing all those things. Is that, how does that kind of affect you if at all during practice? Does it make it different at all? It prepares you. It prepares you for the atmosphere. You're gonna see on Saturday with all the band music and the fans and the Gator Chomp and all that extra stuff that they do out there. But I feel I feel like these guys understand what's at stake here and that we need to play hard. Do you think you guys would be less? How, how do you how do you view how you guys went into Alton Stadium, reacted to the crowd, the first room game of the year? How do you think you guys did with that, and then how will that prepare you for this week? Alton Stadium is one of the one of the most known stadiums in the nation. Same as the Swamp. I feel like I feel like we'll be well prepared for that because when you play in an atmosphere such as Oregon, you come out and play in an atmosphere such as Florida, it's not going to be as bad. But at the same time, you have to understand you got to lock in and play through anything. We talked about Driscoll. I'm just wondering the level of quarterback play in the SEC. How has it changed from the time you arrived on campus to now? Last year, you notice a difference in the level of quarterback, quarterback play. What I've noticed the most is that quarterbacks now in the SEC are becoming more and more mobile as the years advance, and I feel like these guys are now able to make plays, not only with their arms, but with their feet. They're able to get outside the pocket, prolong drives, prolong passing plays, and I feel like as defensive linemen, we also have to adapt to certain situations like that. You gotta be able to contain these guys. And I think it's a good thing that we have mobile quarterbacks, but at the same time, it helps the defense get better. So how has this line dealt with the lack of depth? Probably with all the losses y'all had, and the interior and we have four of them in the end. How have y'all so far tonight? We put all the all the troubles on ourselves. We understand that we have guys that are gonna have to play no matter what the situation. We have guys that that are gonna have to play 40, 50 snaps and guys are gonna have to come in and give breaks to guys that play 40 and 50 snaps. We just have to buy in all together and play hard for one another because when you have guys that are down, you gotta have that extra little bit of energy to keep you going forward. Thank you. you think back to 2004, how old were you the last time Tennessee beat uh, Florida? 2004, 13 or 14? Yeah. Do you, do you, do you, do you remember what you were doing around that, that period of time? Like you playing, were you still playing football, basketball, playing another sport? Yes, sir. I was playing football and basketball at the time. I was at Florence Chapel Middle School in South Carolina around that time. Yeah. Remember what was going on in the world? It was a long time ago. That's why I'm asking. I don't remember too much of that. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie to you. It was a long time ago. That was a while ago. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Two All totally right. different types of containment with Mariota last question. week and Driscoll this week. But those practices were going to contain the last